Hey guys, Carrie here, and this week I did something different. So I had the opportunity to go down to Santa Monica and see presidential candidate Tulsi Gabbard speak. Now, if you've never heard of her, she is a Democratic candidate. And if you know any of my videos, you know that I don't participate in elections. I don't believe in democracy. You can check out my video on the world's most dangerous religion to understand why. But I really, really respect Tulsi Gabbard. And here are some of the reasons I respect her and why politicians and the media don't. You actually said that you actually get attacked mostly by Democrats and the mainstream media and the and established Democrats and not Republicans. I've actually seen you go on a show with Tucker Carlson. You guys have mostly agree on a lot of things. What did you mean by, so you can maybe explain to voters at home in the audience, what do you mean by you're getting attacked mostly by your own party and, and the mainstream media? That the issues that I'm raising in this campaign are challenging the foreign policy establishment. We are challenging the status quo. We are challenging the military industrial complex. And what we see in Washington is an entrenched establishment that have been uh, across both political parties that have either benefited from or are working with those entrenched parties. Uh, so we are uh, in, in our quest to end these regime change wars, to end this new Cold War and nuclear arms race. We're shining the light on the truth about how these policies have negatively impacted the American people, which is why we're seeking to change them. So assuming you got elected in 2020, and we're still in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Syria. What would you do on January 21st, 2021? Uh, begin to bring our troops home. Yeah. I'm committed as president to end these regime change wars. Unfortunately, because of the hyper-partisanship that we're seeing in Washington, uh, when you're putting forward a Democratic bill, more often than not, Republicans will oppose it just because it's a Democrat bill, regardless of the substance. But the opposite is also true. That more often than not, if a Republican bill gets put forward, the Democrats will oppose it just because it's a Republican bill, ignoring the substance. And, and you'll sometimes even see how that same bill will be reintroduced by someone from the other party and then get the support of the people from their party. It is ridiculous. So as I said, I don't participate in elections. I don't believe in the system whatsoever. However, I definitely agree with Tulsi Gabbard on some of her positions on foreign policy and just on the nature of establishment politics. So I got an opportunity to ask her a question and I decided to go from a premise we both share, which is that we disagree with American foreign policy. And I decided to take it a step further. When you look at the foreign policy of the United States government and the havoc it's created under the banner of good intentions, does it make you skeptical of giving that same government sweeping power in other areas? areas of our lives like healthcare, education, and the economy? I think what matters most is making sure we have the right kind of leadership in our government, that our government is fulfilling its role and responsibility, which is acting in the best interest of our people. So whether you look at our national security, our foreign policy, or our domestic policy, as long as we keep that in the forefront, and we have leaders who are uh, embodying the values of service above self, service to the American people ahead of any other interest, um, then we can fulfill that mission. If we have leaders, as we do now, who are undermining that mission by serving either themselves, their own political interests, their own political parties, uh, special interest corporations, or other, even other countries and other governments, then this is where the problems begin. And this is why we're seeing the challenges that we see both in foreign policy as well as domestic policy. She basically did give me a politician's answer, which is we just have to elect the right people. While I obviously respect Tulsi's loud and unwavering voice, not only on the US empire, but also on the drug war and the entrenched establishment, this doesn't change the reality that where government gets involved, corruption and ineptitude usually follow. Take the most heavily regulated industries and programs, and you'll find that just like the military, they fail to achieve their stated goals, most often at great cost to the taxpayer and the people who are supposed to benefit. It's also the case that when you give increasing power and authority to the government, even if you get some things you want, there's no way to contain the beast. Just look at FDR, who's still celebrated as a progressive hero despite the fact that his administration turned away Jewish refugees escaping Hitler, threw Japanese Americans in camps, and enacted racist housing laws, just to name a few offenses. More importantly though, and what I wish I could have said to her, is that when she refers to we the people, it's only when we the people rise up to demand the kind of change that we seek to bring. That can also be applied to the millions of people who voted for Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton who all believe they are the true we the people and they deserve to rule. And this is why I don't advocate on behalf of political candidates or the democratic system as a whole. No matter how well-intentioned or virtuous you may be, other people with very different values will also seek power and try to impose their views on you whether you agree or not. Further, politics will always attract far more criminals and corruption than good people because it's a center of power. As Mark Twain said, an honest man in politics 
politics shines more there than he would elsewhere. Americans have been electing who they believe to be the right people for centuries, and it got us here. People have conflicting ideas on who the right people are. Many think Trump is actually sent by God. As long as there's majority rule, there is absolutely no guarantee that even if the right people existed and were seeking power, that there would be freedom and justice. Democracy creates a power struggle that no matter what results in the violation of somebody's rights. Because no matter who wins, millions of people will not feel represented, yet will not have a choice in funding the government programs and policies the victors impose. Now, this doesn't mean I don't respect and appreciate Tulsi, because I really do. But I do wish people could start to rationally and consistently apply their views on the state. Imagine if Republicans who claim to be anti-government recognize the failures and dangers of militarism in America's encroaching police state. Imagine if Democrats who claim to support peace and value humanity recognize that all of their policies require state violence to enforce and do not respect consent. What's your solution, you might be wondering? Tulsi, for example, spoke a lot about the responsibility of individuals to take action in their everyday lives to help the environment. For me as a kid, this started with just getting together with some friends of mine saying, hey, there's a bunch of trash on the beach, let's go clean it up on the weekends. The actions that we take every day, the decisions that we make, have a direct impact uh, on our planet on the things that we hold dear. She also spoke about the importance of awareness and knowledge of the problems we face. It's being involved and helping to inform others about the issues that we face. I believe this decentralized approach, which involves personal responsibility, consciousness, and the combined actions of billions of people, is the only true way to not only make a difference, but also respect the rights of others and ensure freedom. After all, most human interactions are already like this, and it's the state that disrupts and destroys.